This is the mast and sail from the mirror dinghy that my granddad built from a kit way back in 1971. Sadly, neither granddad nor the boat he built are with us anymore, and this is all that remains. I'd love to use it again, but that's going to need a boat. Now, we already have a homemade boat. This is the 15-foot dory that the family built years ago. It's a wonderful boat, and we have had many, many, many great adventures in it. But it's a rowing boat. If I added the basics to convert it for sailing, it would weigh too much and the rowing would be spoiled. So I've been thinking about building something new, something small and light and speedy. We live only four miles from the water and we just don't use it enough. But it also has to be something very, very, very cheap and also fast to build. I mean, I really should be getting on with other things. And anyway, who has time to spend months building a boat when the sky is blue and the wind is warm? So I'm setting myself the challenge of building a boat in one day and then sailing it. Building a boat in a day is a challenge because there's a lot to do and also because there's no time for any glue to dry, no time for layers of epoxy resins to go off, no time for steam bending spars or layers of tar and paint. No, if this is going to work it's going to need a slightly novel approach to boat design. First I thought I could use these pipes from the builder's merchants. Other people have built catamarans with them. They come in different sizes and they look smooth and tempting. But really they're heavy and expensive and they're actually the wrong shape. Plus they're brittle so for safety's sake they should be filled with this stuff, polystyrene, or this stuff, polyurethane foam. So I was standing around looking at this and thought maybe it doesn't need to be in a pipe after all. Maybe it would work on its own. It needs support because it's brittle and fragile, but it's waterproof and it even has a foil skin. So I came up with this idea, strapping some onto a frame. The frame would be the structure, the spine for each hull. At first, I wanted to use aluminium ladders, one for each hull. I thought that would be really cool, but they were too expensive. So I'll have to make my own wooden ladders and use them. The foam will be protected on three sides, and I hope the ladders will be rigid enough to stop it bending too much. My plan is to shape the ends and cover them with inner tube rubber. Once the wind starts blowing, the hulls will try to collapse sideways. I'm hoping that steel pipes extending through the hulls and through the connecting frames will keep them upright. I used a waste piece from the skip and made a one-fifth scale model just to test the flotation. Scaled up this would be the same as using three sheets of foam. I found the scale weight of me, I hope I did, and this pot now represents me. I knew you. And it can certainly hold me up. In fact, I suspect it's way more than I need and the full-size cat would need four people at least just to lift it. So then I made another couple of models using the equivalent of just two sheets of foam. One long and thin and the other short and fat. Both would support me. And then I made a scale-sized sail to see whether the wind would blow them straight over. And we even arranged for two wave machines to simulate extreme weather conditions. <laughs> In the end I went for the shorter shape because it would give a little more height above the waterline, which could be crucial, especially in the lee bow. <laughs> I can't do anything with the geese in it. That's the part that is most likely to get caught under a wave when the wind pushes that corner down into the sea. Oh dear, dear. 
Better wear your life jacket, Tim. Back to the computer where I've been trying to figure out the other important things a boat design needs, like retractable rudders. And how about dagger boards? Do I need them at all? And if so, should I just push them down through the frame or should I try and make them retractable too? I just don't know. Maybe the hulls will work well enough as keels or maybe without dagger boards that stick down into the water, the wind will blow the whole thing sideways. Hmm. The boat people I have asked have been less than enthusiastic about this project. Probably just jealous. I'm also trying to figure out where exactly to put the mast and the seat? Both fairly crucial in a tiny boat like this. I could perhaps work it out with a whole lot of complicated calculations, or I could just guess. Next, I laid out all the pieces onto the equivalent of a sheet of 12mm ply, and I found if I arrange them carefully, I can get all the pieces I need from just two sheets and still have enough to make a paddle and maybe even a lunchbox. So that's two sheets of ply, two sheets of insulation foam, a few lengths of deal and some pipe. Okay, so it won't be sleek and shiny or even waterproof, but at least it will be well insulated. What do you think? Wish me luck. Watch out for the build video coming up next.